is one thing they can't hide. Steroid use shrinks the testicles. Start him on Lupron right away. And if he told you the truth, what would this stuff do to him? Severe respiratory problems. Interesting though, House is treating for androgen excess using Lupralide, which has a bit of a counterintuitive mechanism. Cut! Let's start with the second part first. Interesting. So it seems like this is a sportsman who's taken drugs, was out of baseball for a while and is just starting back now. He's doing some kind of public service drugs announcement. Interestingly, those kinds of announcements tend to do the opposite of their intended effects, like Nancy Reagan's Just Say No campaign actually got people who weren't taking drugs to think, well, all of my peers taking them instead, and via social proof, ended up getting more people to take drugs, which is obviously what you don't want. Now with that throw, a lot of force actually goes through the arm, and he's not been in practice, an injury could happen, but not usually an injury like that. See, young athletes, even if they've taken crack cocaine, don't just have their bones smashed like that with a throw. An injury is more likely in soft tissue like tendons or muscles. That tells me that this is probably what we call a pathological fracture, and he has a reason for brittle bones like osteoporosis, a lytic bone lesion from cancer, metabolic abnormalities like Paget disease or infection like osteomyelitis could cause it. We definitely want blood tests including a metabolic panel and tumor markers, an x-ray, DEXA scan, CT chest, abdomen and pelvis and then take it from there. House is gonna love this case. Very spicy. He's got osteopenia. His bones are too thin to fix the arm problem. MRI and PET scan are both negative. Chem 7 also shows a poor kidney function. Interestingly, now we know our patient has osteopenia, which is reduced bone mineral density compared to others of his age, but that's not quite osteoporosis. We also know he has poor kidney function, which is very important in the context of bones. That's because kidneys serve a few important functions. They activate vitamin D, which is necessary for the body to absorb calcium and also respond to parathyroid hormone to resorb calcium and excrete phosphate. So if the kidneys aren't working properly, then phosphate builds up in the bloodstream. There's a lack of vitamin D, which both leads to low calcium levels and you need calcium to maintain bone mineral strength. That's why you'll notice many postmenopausal women taking calcium and vitamin D supplements as women become prone to osteoporosis once their estrogen levels drop. Anyways, last time I checked, our patient was not a postmenopausal woman, so let's get more clues. He weighed 175 his rookie year. Stop. Now he's 195 after playing a year in Japan. Steroids. That explain the weight gain. And the kidney problems. And the bone loss. Interesting, a little inaccurate here though, to be fair. Corticosteroids like prednisolone can definitely cause osteopenia when used chronically. They're used as immunosuppressants for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Anabolic steroids, on the other hand, actually increase bone mineral density by stimulating a curious cell type called the osteoblast. You can think of it as the brick layer of the bone architecture laying down fresh bone. So anabolics wouldn't explain his symptoms. The team did say something interesting though. He played a year in Japan. Sounds like a clue to me. I've got a theory. What if he smoked a lot of marijuana, did some ketamine and opioids and started gaining weight, hung around in some not so savory places and Japan has one of the highest rates of TB in the developed world. He then gets infected, which causes his kidney disease and osteomyelitis of his humerus. Scans could easily be negative. You can then test him by doing a test called a quantiferon and a sputum culture and bronchoalveolar lavage for definitive diagnosis, which is a procedure where they basically wash out lots of phlegm from your lungs. If that's true, then six months of treatment and he'll be good as new. So here's a question for you smart people. What are the top five infectious diseases by lives claimed in modern history? Answers down below. He tested negative for steroids. Elevated beta-2 proteins though. Thanks. Less money is made by biochemists working on a cure for cancer than by their colleagues struggling valiantly to find ways to hide steroid use. Interesting, so House thinks he's hiding steroid use somehow. 
The elevated beta 2 microglobulin in the urine is also interesting. It's an immune mediator that signifies activation of the cellular immune system. It can be a marker of hematological malignancies like lymphoma or myeloma, but his PET scans were negative. So it could also be a marker of infection like tuberculosis. Another interesting diagnosis in case TB is wrong, this would be extremely rare though, is a androgen secreting tumor that would mimic the presence of anabolic steroids without him actually taking them. Total blood testosterone would be high and he would be negative for anabolic drug use. Testing 17 ketosteroids in the urine and blood testosterone can be helpful, but we would have likely seen that tumor on the PET or MRI scans, although it could be hiding behind something else. Let's find out. But there is one thing they can't hide. Steroid use shrinks the testicles. Start him on Lupron right away. And if he told you the truth, what would this stuff do to him? Severe respiratory problems. Interesting though, House is treating for androgen excess using lupulide, which has a bit of a counterintuitive mechanism to what you might think, as it actually stimulates the hypothalamic pituitary testicular hormone axis, as it's a gonadotrophin hormone releasing agonist. So it stimulates the pituitary gland to produce hormones called LH and FSH, which in short-term use actually surge testosterone, the opposite of what House is trying to achieve here. But with long-term use, it actually suppresses testosterone levels and it medically castrates the patient. How does it do that? Using another hormone called LHRH or luteinizing hormone releasing hormone because as the luprolide acts on the pituitary gland, it sends a negative feedback to the hypothalamus to say not to produce LHRH, which then leads to lower testosterone levels. Pretty cool, but what House is saying here about if it being wrong, it would produce severe respiratory problems isn't quite true. So let's see how that plays out. My pitching coach had me on something. I never knew what it was. I gained 12 pounds of muscle in like four weeks. Oh, our athlete did take anabolic steroids. Good call, House. We're still understanding the mechanisms of how anabolics can damage the kidneys, but there are a variety of ways. So the first one is through something called focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, which is a type of glomerulonephritis that affects the kidney architecture itself. The second is by causing high blood pressure, which can damage the kidneys. And the third is through stimulating excessive protein intake that can exacerbate existing kidney disease. Now the team think that after attributing the kidneys to the anabolic steroids, Addison's disease can explain the rest. Hypogonadism, reduced bone mineral density, and Apparently now he has also deranged liver function tests as well. But do you know that the most common cause of Addison's disease worldwide is tuberculosis? If I got that, that would be incredible. If you're enjoying the content and would like to make my day by doing something incredible, then check out the channel membership. Not only does it support me a lot, but it also gives you access to some exclusive perks like being able to recommend a series and episode for me to react to and getting early access to new videos. The first 30 members will also enter into a raffle to win a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour coaching session with me on a medical topic of your choice. We've already got 10 members, so make sure to secure your spot before it's too late. The earlier you join, the earlier I can also react to your suggestions. So click the join button now. Do you like monster trucks? I got two tickets Friday night. Are you asking me to go with you? Sure. Like a date? Exactly, except for the, the date part. What do I wear? And that children is how grandma met grandpa. Almost as romantic as Tinder. Can you imagine House's profile? 55, love monster trucks, Vicodin and zebras, full-time doctor, part-time specialist in finding your biggest weaknesses and pointing them out, charming. Something very interesting here though is that he originally asked Wilson who said he was busy giving a talk at the oncology lecture. Now Cameron mentioned Wilson canceled that two weeks ago. Why would he not want to spend time with House? He's endlessly entertaining. Also, Foreman is lying about seeing a girl for an unclear reason. There's loads of stuff going on. As well, the patient's wife wants to give him a kidney but can't because she's now pregnant. 
Let's find out some more. My chest feels funny. Your heart's beating too fast. Why is this potassium up? It's definitely not Addison's. Heart rate's down to 40. Call me when he's stable. We're dead. What on earth is going on with this patient? First he's tacky, now he's Brady. Seems like autonomic dysfunction to me. The potassium can be high because of kidney dysfunction as well. k is a sodium polystyrene that binds potassium in the gut to help it be excreted that they gave to him because of the high potassium. So what could cause autonomic dysfunction and him being unresponsive to atropine? The most common thing that could cause all his symptoms could be diabetes leading to autonomic dysfunction. Another good diagnosis could be amyloidosis, maybe lupus, Lyme disease, HIV or botulism could as well, but he has no other symptoms of them. Let's find out. The stuff's just a little stronger. He's hallucinating. Digitalis. It would only explain the later symptoms, not the original ones. That's swelling. It's called clubbing. What? Okay, so is the patient poisoning himself with the coach's medication? Nah, surely that's not it. He's just come off cocaine. He wanted to protect his wife's baby. Something else is going on here. Maybe the pills got mixed up by accident. Digitalis is a drug that comes from the dry leaves of the common foxglove plants. It acts to stimulate the rest and digest system to slow electrical conduction through the heart. It's one of those drugs that we say has a narrow therapeutic index. That means it's very easy to have too much of it. Toxicity can cause weight loss, nausea, vomiting, slow heart rate, and neurological symptoms like hallucinations. It can be diagnosed with a blood test and treatment is with specific antibody antigen binding fragments as an antidote. It seems like his coach has a heart condition and probably is taking the digitalis for that. Maybe that's how the patient got his hands on it. Let's find out. Yeah, I got a heart condition. Digitalis. Hank Wiggins stole your pills. I'm scheduling the transplant. What? So House was saying that the patient tried to kill himself to stop the wife getting rid of her baby. His original symptoms were simply caused by chronic kidney disease from the anabolic steroids. That does make sense. Damn, this patient is really going to the extreme to try and keep his baby alive. You have to respect that, although it is not a very real situation since even with kidney failure, he could go on dialysis and wait for a different kidney donor to become available, although that is an average wait of three to five years. Makes for some really interesting television. Though. I'll start treating the Addisons. Hank Wigan peed on me. <laughs> he doesn't want your kidney. He'll die? Probably. Keep the baby. You can't smell that? Interesting, so Hank Wigan pulled House down when he suggested the transplant because that would have meant his wife having an abortion. House then got pee all over his right leg from Hank's catheter bag. Now it seems like Hank's wife can't smell it at all. Seems like a huge clue. Now, I think since the wife has it, she must have gotten it from Hank, which means it could be infective. Maybe she had COVID before it was mainstream and that knocked out her sense of smell. Just kidding, this was 2005, nobody's that early. It could be the predecessor though. SARS-1 could fit the symptoms and he was in Japan, although the time scales don't quite fit there as you would have expected him to be more acutely unwell maybe while he was there or when he'd just gotten back. That could be knocking him off though and not showing up in the scans. Let's see, question for you smart people. What have been the three most deadly pandemics in history? Answer down below. On a side note here, Wilson seems to be seeing House's ex-wife Stacy for dinner, and that's why he couldn't go to the monster truck event, although that forced House to get a date, not date, date kind of situation with Cameron going on, so probably for the best. You add her symptoms to his. Got me in poisoning. Explains everything. I think I know how it happened. A little weed every now and then when no one was looking. What? Heavy metal poisoning with cadmium due to cannabis use. Wow. The cannabis plant is actually very interesting as it absorbs a lot of heavy metals from the soil, such as selenium, mercury, cadmium, lead, chromium, nickel, and arsenic. Your average street pharmacist may be lacking in the Breaking Bad chemistry knowledge to pick up pollutants in the soil that could spoil a batch. The amount of metals though likely wouldn't be so clinically significant to cause this degree of illness 
and there are no cases of cadmium poisoning due to cannabis exposure ever recorded in human history. Makes for very good television though. I'd say 7.5 out of 10 for entertainment, 4 for accuracy and 7 for diagnosis. Treatment is generally with supportive care as there haven't been any approved chelators that have been proven safe for cadmium poisoning. Trials have been done on EDTA, which is a type of chelator, but that can cause toxicity to the kidneys by itself. Let's see how they treat him. See, this is what happens when we tell people to go green. Based on the symptoms, you're a lot more than a social user. We'll start treatment right away. That was amazing. Grave digger never disappoints. You gonna finish that? <laughs> what? Let's start treatment, it'll fix you right away. Then you don't mention what treatment, because there are no licensed treatments. Ah well, at least he's better now and can go look after his kid, go back to playing baseball. I'm also loving this Cameron House situation with the giggling, sharing candy floss, and bonding over grave diggers, smashing stuff to pieces. Can't wait to see how that's gonna play out. If I'm trying this hard to get the diagnosis, do I get it in the next one? Find out here, stay curious.